<laughs> Our next guest has, uh, unfortunately, way too much experience with real crime. And uh, he is the sheriff of Morgan County, Casey Bohr, who has some good news to give us here. Sheriff, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, and my experience is in investigating real crime, not in real crime. <laughs> yes, big <laughs> distinction there. You are correct. Yeah. Uh, good you, morning. You have found your shooter, Sheriff. Well, we believe we've identified the shooter from about a week ago at the uh, one of the large parties that um, Morgan and Berkeley County has been plagued with over the summertime. Uh, unfortunately, in this entrance, in this instance, four people were shot. Thankfully, none of them uh, uh, gravely wounded to the point of, you know, death. So uh, give us some of the detail here. I know you've released a name, and uh, tell me what's, what happens next. Well, uh, some great investigative work by uh, deputies, Deputy Deal and Deputy Knotts, who stuck with this case 24-7, along with Captain Stapleton, for several days to identify the shooter. There were a large amount of people at this gathering, so uh, it was quite a task to identify those people, plus uh, interview the people that were wounded, and then uh, try to identify who the subject was. Uh, I believe we were able to do that Thursday or Thursday evening and then seek warrants, and uh, uh, fortunately he was arrested without incident in Shenandoah County, Virginia. Kind of a uh, ironic situation. Um, we're looking for him. We're searching for him and uh, actively trying to find him. And he goes to Shenandoah County, Virginia, to appear in traffic court for a traffic court date and gets locked up on that. And ultimately, we find out, or they find out, that he's wanted in West Virginia. And this fellow goes by the name of Monty. Yeah, it goes by the name of Monte uh, Montello Scott, residents of uh, Hedgesville. Yeah, Sheriff, I understand this was a, uh, a social media sort of party. The invitation was uh, posted on social media and held in an Airbnb. Is that correct? Good morning, Mr. Stubblefield. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. um, this particular inc instance was not Airbnb. Okay. Uh, over the course of the summer, uh, you learn something new all the time. And we found out that there's a app on Snapchat called Venture Club where people just post that they're having parties. And anybody and everybody on the app just shows up. Uh, we've Some of the parties that we've broken up over the past couple months in Berkeley County has broken up. Uh, people have been from the four-state area, ages between 15 and in adulthood. Uh, it, drinking is a common denominator, some drugs and uh, weapons. In this particular case, uh, if it was not an Airbnb, whose home was it in? Uh it was a residence on Householder Road in Berkeley County that's near the Berkeley Morgan County line. It's actually in Morgan County near the Berkeley Morgan County line. Do we have any idea what sparked the shooting? Uh, there appeared to be hostilities, argument, and a, and a fight that broke out. Were there was there were there multiple gunmen or just the one, Sheriff? Uh, at this time, we've identified three different cartridge casings uh, at the scene. Uh, so at this point, uh, we have at least one gunman that we know of. Uh, one of the other uh, explanations for the cartridge casings is self-defense on the part of uh, the homeowner or the property owner. Self-defense casings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other parties that have been involved over the course of the summer that you had mentioned, had there been shootings at any of those? Uh, there's not been any shootings. Uh, Sheriff Blair and I liaise quite a bit. I know there was one in Inwood Bunker Hill area a month or so ago where there was, I'll, I'll describe it as gunplay, and then a couple of hours has been gunplay where people have been displaying their firearms, shooting their firearms off, but thankfully no one had been hit up till the other night last week. Now, in this case, you mentioned ages 15 years of age. Uh, are there any charges of underage, charges of underage drinking? There are some charges pending. I know in uh, Murphy County case, they have uh, located the um, the person who hosted the party and rented the Airbnb, and they sought warrants and charges for contributing delinquency of minor and some other offenses. And in this particular case, we're going to do the same as well as soon as we identify everything. Sheriff, this is John Gilstrap. Is there any indication that the the shooting was the intention of 
whoever started this, did they come there to create violence or did it just sort of grow up through the party? As far as I know, it just kind of, as you described, grew up through the party. Uh, we don't have any information at this point in time that they came there for that sole purpose. So the in the initial investigation, did you know fairly early on who the who the bad guy, who the shooter was? We did not. Uh, we had descriptions. We had information. And uh, we looked at a couple. A lot, a lot of folks have street names. Hmm. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to identify the street names and link it to the actual given name. Uh, so we worked a good bit with uh, Berkeley County and Hagerstown PD and Martinsburg PD to try to identify some people from their street names. And the people who were wounded, were they the intended targets of the shooting or were they just in the way of where the bullets went? I don't know that, sir. I really don't. Okay. And how badly are they wounded? Uh, two individuals were treated and released from Berkeley Medical Center that night. Uh, one had to undergo surgery, and then another was uh, was transported to Ruby Memorial in Morgantown for uh, for treatment and surgery. You mentioned uh, KC, and we're talking with KC Bohr, Sheriff of Morgan County, that uh, the suspect was already in the system at one point. What kind of priors are we talking about with the suspect? He had a prior uh, juvenile record, so I cannot go into that at all. Uh, but as far as an adult record, there was nothing. What are the options for charging a juvenile as an adult in West Virginia, Casey? Well, he he actually just turned 18, so that's not on the table in this particular case. He turned 18 a couple of weeks ago. But in this case, uh, depending on the crime and depending on a lot of the elements, the prosecuting attorney then can petition the court to move a juvenile offender to adult status. And it's it's done, uh, I'd say, somewhat frequently in violent crimes and depending on the age. Is this investigation closed now or are there still other layers to it? No, there's other layers to it. Uh, there's still more people to talk to, and uh, investigation really doesn't close until we we get uh, into the court system. Sometimes, even at the last minute, there's you know leads to follow up on. Sometimes there's leads to discount and information. So it's an ongoing investigation. So you're looking for one more shooter. Is that correct? Potentially. Mm -hmm. Not really sure at this point. Uh, again, it's a week old, so a lot of things have to happen as far as evidence and uh, uh, pertaining to the, the cartridge casings and linking them to the actual firearm, then link the firearm to the individual. Yeah, you saw. You mentioned there are three different uh, cartridge casings, so that's what made me think there's probably one more shooter. Right. Yeah. So. Well, possibly, and we're looking into that sure. and some other leads as well. We talked about this the last time we spoke with you, Casey, in regards to that app. Will there now be somebody in your department who will be monitoring that app to find out when the next party in Morgan County might be? Sheriff Blair and I and the West Virginia Fusion Center are working on some uh, proactive involvement as far as the apps and that sort of thing. In and of itself, so, this, there's nothing illegal about the app or, or the no, party. No, not, not at all. Uh, Nothing illegal unless the person who's having the party has, you know, nefarious intents as far as drug use and that sort of thing. But those are all things that are under investigation and remain to be seen. If in the course of monitoring an app like that, you discover that some of those intending to attend a party like this are underage, does that give you enough cause to go to the party without somebody calling to complain about it? Yes, it actually could. Yes, if we if we know and we monitor and we find out that they're going to the party and there's uh, drug and alcohol use, then that would give us the the conduit to look into it and, and scrutinize it much much more stringently. My inner mystery writer is awakened by these three shell casings. <laughs> is, is is it possible are they the same caliber? Is it possible they just loaded one person loaded the same weapon with different brands of bullets? Well, the same weapon wouldn't you they could use different brands but not different caliber oh so they are different caliber correct oh, oh okay okay you have uh -huh. a, you have so, a missing oh go ahead i'm sorry Tom. <laughs> no I was, I was going to ask shifting subjects when when an offender juvenile offender serves his time or her time and 
does that juvenile record, I know they get sealed. Does that mean they become irrelevant and inaccessible f- later if the same offender as an adult offender commits a crime? Can that yes. juvenile record be usable? No, no. Hmm. Now, basically, when you turn 18, you're, the slate's wiped clean in West Virginia. There was a question in our comment section. Would the homeowner face any charges for perhaps allowing underage drinking? I think you addressed that yes, earlier, did. Casey, yes. did you not? Yeah. Potentially it could be if they if they had knowledge or uh, they solicited it. If they had knowledge of it, yes, they potentially could. And yeah. the name of the app, once again, there are some folks asking about that again, so maybe they have kids they might want to want monitor this yeah. app as well. The, the one that's most predominant right now is Venture Club. Venture Club. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Has there been any instances at all that the app has been used for a an unsuspecting residence just to uh, create some mischief? Not that, not that we're aware of. Do you have any updates on the missing 15 year old Casey? Uh, Angel no, Turner. Unfortunately not. Corporal Hedrick's heading that investigation. So he's looking into a lot of different things. Uh, the, uh, I know last week uh, he was examining, along with uh, Sergeant C with the state police, some of the social media uh, and some of the electronics that the juvenile might have had access to to see if any leads could, could be derived from that. And I know I spoke with him, I believe, on Friday, and he was making some inroads on uh, a potential online identity that uh, – trying to identify who that person was. Is it still being treated as a missing person at this point? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Now, the gentleman you arrested was charged with malicious wounding. What is the potential jail time for that? I'd have to look at the code on that, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't want to misquote. Uh, it's substantial. I know we had discussed with the prosecuting attorney the other day uh, whether the charge of malicious wounding or the attempted murder, essentially, uh, I know the penalties are about the same. And in this particular case, there's four counts. But uh, when we have something like that, often we make the charges so that we can get the person in custody and have them held. And then uh, once we go to preliminary hearings or especially grand jury, then the prosecuting attorney digests a little bit more of the situation and he can enhance the charges and add charges to it. Very good. Uh, Casey, you had a pretty good run of not appearing on our show. I'm sorry that it had to be broken this way. Well, it's always good to talk with you, Rob. Yeah. Thank uh, you, sir. Going back to the missing uh, uh, juvenile, uh, the young girl, uh, how do you go about uh, trying to get the first substantial lead? Uh, Because right now you don't know if she's just uh, run away from home or if there's something uh, uh, more dire. Or How do you go about getting the first substantial lead? There's many different ways. Obviously, you do canvases of the neighborhood, friends, uh, interviews with the family, interviews with friends. Uh, And and our day today is trying to locate any and all uh, video evidence that may or may not exist. So all those... uh, channels or, or investigated uh, probably remember the tragedy of Riley Crossman a few yes. years ago that yes. we had and uh, you know having been in law enforcement investigations a long time uh, I was shocked at the amount of shocked but not shocked at the amount of video evidence that's aware or available these days if you locate it I mean every home can have a ring doorbell camera most businesses uh there's lpr systems on the highways uh you know a lot of times uh you just have to go out and and painstakingly look and find this this video evidence if it still exists sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't as uh i assume by now everybody's checked her social media accounts casey uh that's yeah that's being investigated heavily yeah all right. Uh, anything else in Morgan County you want to make our listeners and viewers aware of, Casey? Well, uh, we really like to have a quiet week so we can catch up on some things. But yeah. uh, right now, uh, nothing really. Uh, bypass is uh, somewhat functional now, just in part. So everybody needs to uh, be getting used to the new traffic patterns and mm-hmm. the roundabouts. Uh, 
I would encourage anybody that needs roundabout experience to go to Inwood and, uh, <laughs> and, and drive the course. <laughs> There's a lot of them. You, yeah. You, yeah, you all know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, but you know, anytime uh, local folks have a different uh, uh, method of transportation or highway to go on, it takes a little bit to get used to. Uh, the big thing I guess we really should talk about is school safety. Uh, we have a new school year starting next week, and uh, we'll be out in full force first couple days making sure that the commute for the children is you know, great. And uh, we have a new superintendent this year, and we had our first school safety meeting uh, last week. We get together with those folks. Uh, the officers are out in the schools daily doing school safety checks, so we just want to do everything we can proactive to try to make it a safe and, and a good a good year for the for the children. It's been amazing, the turnover in superintendents in Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan County over the last yes, two years. Yes, it has. Right? Complete yeah. upheaval. Do you have SROs in most of the schools, uh, Sheriff? Unfortunately not. We have one that floats between all the schools. Uh Manpower in in this county is uh, is is very uh, short compared to, to uh, right now. And when we're full staff, we have 13 deputies here, and I think there's only three troopers assigned here. Uh, there's no police in Paul Paul in the town of, and there's one in Berkeley Springs. So we're uh, quite spread quite thin, but we do the best that we can. I have a friend who's a retired state trooper in Maryland, and he now helps run grants for police departments in his region mm -hmm. to be able to do traffic uh, con uh, control once again. Uh, in other words, chasing down speeders. And it's, it strikes me when I asked him about this is that I thought that was part of your job, period. He said departments are so underfunded now and so short on staff that this type of thing has really fallen to, to a lower oh, yeah. priority because you're, you're too busy chasing down serious crime to be worried about somebody going 45 and a 35. Mm -hmm. Do you rely on those grants as well? Which What the grants do is they provide overtime money for the department we, so that they can do we, traffic we enforcement. We do. We, we're heavily involved. In fact, we're, we're the, uh, the department that is in charge of the grant for this region, Region 6. Uh, so we do Governor's Highway Safety Grants quite a bit. Uh, sometimes... Uh, you know, officers just get tapped out. They need time off to themselves and a little bit of R&R &R time. So sometimes we don't have as many as, as we need. Uh, having been in, in law enforcement for, oh, good Lord, going on five decades now, you know, we used to have time to be more proactive with traffic enforcement and things. But now uh, with with crime, with, with drug-related crime and things, uh, traffic is, is really a low priority when it comes to all the other duties. And, again, there's more of them and less of us. Mm -hmm. Sheriff, what's the population of uh, Morgan County? I'm struck, uh, I'm struck with the fact you only have 13 deputies. Well, depending on, on how you view that, uh, we're somewhere between 19 and 20,000. Uh, that's on the books. But Morgan County is sort of a bedroom community, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, of summer uh, residences. Mm -hmm. I would say summertime, we're probably in the neighborhood of 25. Uh, a lot of weekend residents, people from uh, from the metro region have, uh, region have homes and, and cabins and things in Cold Run Valley Road area and the Cape and State Park. So you have a, a big influx of, of people. And that's not even speaking about US 5, I call it Interstate 522. Mm -hmm. If you've ever driven it, it's like a two lane interstate. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not quite as bad as 81, uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, sometimes I live on 522 in South Morgan County. There are times I can sit between 5 and 10 minutes and try to get on the highway just mm -hmm. to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's truck traffic here is amazing. Uh, it's a shortcut to 70, so a lot of trucks come through this area. So if you factor all that in, sometimes I think that 19 to 20,000 is, 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 is not really a fair number of what you have to particularly, you know, be a law enforcement for Casey. And, I'd put my siren on and just kind of butt in. That's <laughs> yeah, what I probably, that was me. But with the with the geographic size of Morgan County, I I'm really struck by the fact that 13 is a very low number of deputies. It is. Uh, we've worked very well. Our county commission mm -hmm. and 
they've been very supportive of us. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm ending my eight years as sheriff at the end of the year, and we've we've actually increased by uh, one full-time and one part-time guy, and and then we've we've got a uh, full-time special deputy in home confinement. Mm -hmm. So we've picked up about two to three people, uh, but sheriff's departments, you know statewide have grown uh state police numbers have depleted uh in my tenure at least uh when i first came out of high school and went into law enforcement there were four troopers in morgan county and now there's three mm -hmm. um when i was still in berkeley county at one time there was between 25 probably 20 to 25 troopers and that many deputies and now i think they're at about the same manpower level and uh Berkeley County Sheriff's Department's probably approaching 70. I know when I left and when I retired, there were probably we were close to 60. So uh, Case, we I, haven't. I got to break trained. in because we just ran out of time. I want to thank you so much for yours. Oh, good to talk to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Sheriff. Have a good day. Keep up the good work, sir. All right. Have a good day. Thanks, Sheriff. Sheriff Casey Moore.